Hi everyone, we're Michelle and David and welcome to the Exploros channel. Hey, hi everybody, it's David again, the developer of the Exploros Traveller app. And today, or now, we want to have a quick look at Data Manager. And just to start, we're back in our usual demonstration location in Tasmania. But what you can see, I've just got the map layers open and you'll notice that the folders, places, tracks and things are all greyed out. Uh, and I can't do anything with them. Um, that's because the data hasn't been loaded and right now we're going to have a look at Data Manager. So that's a perfect sort of segue into Data Manager. The data manager screen, I'll just close that out, and you can obviously see that there is no places, tracks, and track logs. There's no little icons on the map. Data manager lives in the left hand side menu, and it's just here as data manager. During this uh, initial introductory setup tutorial, it points you at this uh, data manager screen as well. So, hopefully, the information contained in this video will help out if you're going into the setting up of your app for the first time. Okay. Places and treks is a fairly important part of the app. Um, obviously, the app works uh, with the maps, and then we supplement that data with the places and treks, track logs, and other bits and pieces that you can download and put as overlays on top of the map. The app pretty much uh, relies on places and treks, so you should really always up install this. And at the moment, it's not an automatically updated thing. You need to come in periodically and do an update. I'm just going to do the download now so that you can see it happen. It says it's required storage space 15 megs, download size is 6 megs, estimated time 2 minutes. These are very generous estimated times. Uh, you'll see that it will be a lot quicker when I download it here right now. So it's just connecting to the server and downloading the file and then unzipping the file and copying it into the database. So it'll do that for the places bit first gives us some statistics about that. There's 90,000 places in there and it's done the treks and it's just processing the trek routes files. So it's installed the places, 90,098 of them and 195 treks. Now the treks and the places data that's downloaded from there contains both the Explorers data and your personal data if you have created it. So anytime you're working uh, on the app or if you're doing updates through uh, different devices or on the web or other, you may need to come in here more often and do this update. I suggest you do it uh, every other time you open the app or every week or two because the data is dynamic and it is changing all the time. The next one down is the Places and Treks comments data. This is the comments that appear on the each of the Places and Treks. Um, it's automatically, it can automatically download this data as you view each of those and I'll just uh, quickly show you if I can get to one that actually has a comment if I just jump into the places system and I look for anything that has a comment uh, where are we where there's one um, I'll just select cradle valley it has a comment in the database you can see here that it says there's two uh, I'm not going through this places page this was uh, shown in the places video I suggest you have a look at that you'll see that there's two comments here now we didn't download the places and treks comments database but what we will see I'm just going to return to the map and then go back into data manager what you'll see is that it still says places and tracks comments not loaded but incremental total is two and they were the two updates that we just downloaded so if you're working uh, on a on a desktop machine or a machine that you're not going to travel with there's no point downloading this you may as well just rely on the system to deliver it when you're always online or if you're always online of course obviously if you're not you're going to go offline and you want to take this places and tracks comments with you uh, download the whole lot and it'll come with you. Again, I'd suggest you update this periodically. Again, dynamic data, it is automatic, you know, it changes quite often. I am wanting to automate the update of these two. Uh, like you'll see further below, some of the updates are automatically done. Um, there's just a few tricks about trying to make this happen fast enough so that it doesn't slow down the app at boot time and things like that. A lot of things happen in the app at boot time uh, and I'll talk about some more of those down further when we talk about the auto updating parts. But at the moment, these two pieces of the app are a manual update. You'll need to do it periodically when you're in service, obviously, uh, and on good service. The offline map packs, the next part here, um, for Android and uh, for Android users, you'll get the choice of your internal storage or SD card drives if you have them installed in your machine. Uh, obviously, 
you're going to need about five gigs to download the EO Topo 2021 and around about four and a half gigs if you're still losing the EO Topo 2018 or 2019 licenses. You'll see that I have a license for both 19 and 2021. Um, so we can have a look at both. But pick whichever one you uh, has the most space or you, you know is the one that you want to use to store that data. Um, the EO Topo 2021, there's three parts to it. There's low res, high res and extra high res. The low res pack is freely available to everybody. You don't have to buy a license to download the low res pack. It'll give you up to zoom level nine in the app. I'm just going to download this one while we're talking. You're about to download the low res pack. It's about 33 meg. We recommend a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, and it tells you that your device will stay awake. So the screen will not time out while this is going on so that it will ensure that the app stays in the foreground and that the download doesn't pause. So we're downloading and off it goes. Very similar to the download below. It downloads, extracts and then copies it into the database. You'll see and that's finished. There's a 1192 tiles and that's basically done. The high res pack uh, gives you zoom levels up to zoom level 18 but the difference between the high res and the extra high res pack, they both go to zoom level 18, but there is some data that is missing in the high res pack, um, mainly building the building layers and some street labeling and names uh, and small roads. Uh, if they're very short and little, they're not actually included in the high res pack. So whilst you can get quite good detail with the high res pack, some things will not be visible. So realistically, you would probably, I would expect that you would want to download both of these. Now, if you're having a problem with while these downloads are occurring, these larger downloads, uh, I've coded the system so that it will work as fast as possible. The unfortunate part about making it work as fast as possible is that I um, bypass, you know, I don't bypass, but I, you know, some devices have less memory, less RAM and less capability than others. It's very difficult to know what everybody's doing. Some devices may pause during the updates of these uh, packs. Um, it doesn't happen all the time. I can't tell you when and whether your device will or won't happen. If it does, it's not to worry. Um, if you basically see one of these downloads and it's not moving and it hasn't done anything for like 30 seconds or a minute, uh, I'd suggest that it's probably not continuing to work. Uh, you should then swipe away the app, close it off completely, open it up again, come straight back into Data Manager and continue the download. It will continue from wherever it left off. So don't fear, you don't have to start again from the very beginning. Just keep going until the whole thing is installed. These particular ones have got about a million tiles in them. So they're quite large and they take up a fair, they take a bit of time and a bit of space for those installs. Moving down the screen, you'll see track logs. This is one that is an automatic update. Uh, not a very good example. I'm not showing it automatically updated, but I did a database clear before I started this tutorial so that there was nothing installed. I'm just going to get mine going. These auto updated fields, you don't actually have to do anything in here. If you go into your data manager on your device, you should see that this is downloaded and up to date as of the last time you booted the app. Now, I want to just have a quick discussion about these auto updates and these three field, these three systems down here are all linked as auto update. And that's the track logs, the manuals and the offline photos. Auto update basically triggers when you boot the app, it will check for things that need to be updated. Uh, there's three phases, there's three things that can happen that trigger an auto update. When you boot the app and when you bring the app from the background into the foreground and when you go from out of service into service. So that's the three times that these that this process is checked. Um, every time you basically tap your home button on your device and go back to the main screen or the app pages disappear from your front view, you've put the app into the background. So as soon as you bring it into the foreground again, it will go along and do this auto update. I'll show you that in a second. In fact, I was probably going to show you it doing that with my track logs, but it doesn't matter. We'll show you it anyway. So you'll see now that my 284 track logs are installed. Again, you shouldn't have to do this. Same for the reference manuals and the offline photos, you don't actually have a button. Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. The reference manuals are automatically updated. We uh, update those periodically while the app's in circulation. So you may get a message at the bottom down here, a little blue message that comes up and says reference manual auto update. And that means you've got a new copy of the manuals available to you. So it might be worth having a look in there to see what's available and the menus, uh, the manuals are on the left hand menu at the bottom. 
uh, just down here from the left hand menu you go into manuals and about and if you've got manuals I've got the version 7 beta what's a new manual because this is a version 7 product um, you'll have uh, you, you'll have whichever manuals are relevant to what version of the app you're using okay so back to data manager Another new version 7 update is the offline photo system. Uh, it's auto updated. It is incrementally updated via uploading and viewing photos on the system. So as you go into places, treks and track logs, as you're moving around the system, you will uh, be downloading those photos that you can see on the screen into your offline database. So when you take the device offline, those photos and files will come with you. If you submit photos uh, into places, tracks and track logs from your device. So you're wanting to put a photo onto one from your device. It will immediately go into this database and the system will sync it from there to the online system. So you always have a copy of your of your photos if you while they're in the offline photos database. Of course, you can clear that, which would then obviously remove them and you would then have to start again. Um, at this stage, we don't have any auto building or auto adding to the offline photo system. As a new feature, we wanted to test the functionality of this uh, before we go into adding more features and functions to this. Um, but you can be sure that things will update in the future. So the last three options, these, these database resets, they used to be only available on the settings screen. Uh, they are relevant to data manager so in version 7 we've moved them out of settings and we've put them onto the database page which the data manager page which makes much more sense so the clear main db option if you're having problems with your treks or syncing or um, track logs or places or your you know any of these elements aren't sort of behaving the way you want um, and you're not sure what's going on you've tried an update or a reload using these reload buttons and it doesn't seem to have get any better we may prompt you, uh, that is the Explorers team, we may prompt you, or you may just come in and do a clear DB yourself. I'll just quickly do a clear DB, even though I've just installed the DB, but I'll, I'll clear them so that you can see it happening. The track logs have just cleared out, it's coming up again. The places and treks have cleared out, and the places and treks comments have cleared out. So it did exactly what uh, we thought it was going to do. And this time I won't re-download the track logs, I'm going to force the app to restart and we'll see how this works on that bit uh, of th that auto downloads. The other database resets is clear maps DB. That's obviously going to clear out any maps in the EOTOPO 2021 or the EOTOPO 19 or 18 map sets. And I'm not sure whether I explained that the, the 19 map sets are, uh, at the bottom. The primary product is obviously at the top. The older map sets are in the hidden panel below. You can download each or any of these if you have the appropriate licenses. But Clear Maps DB will clear out all this data, so your five odd gigs of data would have to be re-downloaded again, and about an hour and a bit's work uh, or process. You may not do that. I wouldn't suggest you do that unless we advise you to, or unless something goes particularly wrong with your map sets. The last one is the Clear Media DB, and you'll see that I've got 10 photos, a zero unsync photos, and a two megabytes has been consumed by the offline photos. I'll just clear that, and it'll be gone. So just very quickly, I'll jump back onto the app, um, and we will go into, oh, of course, I don't have any places, so I can't do that. That wasn't very clever. Um, what I'll just do is I'm just going to trigger an app restart, or a reboot of the app, and that's, uh, press that button there. Remind me to rate the app later. Basically, I've just reloaded the app. So you can, what we'll do is we'll jump into Data Manager really quickly and hopefully we'll catch a, catch a track logs doing its auto update. There you go. It's just doing an auto update right now. So that was a, an app restart. So that was one of the systems that will force an auto update. While that's just downloading, I will do, I'll, I'll trigger up places and tracks, which will happen after that one's finished. It'll get through that one, and then that one will keep going. Realistically, I don't recommend that you do two downloads at a time. Um, I can do it because I wrote it. No, I, I, it, it's best to do one at a time. Uh, I test it multiple with multiple things happening at once, of course. How's it going? I need to get the places and tracks in so that I can show you the photos and the... Come on. Come on. You can do it. Okay, 
So that's finished and now the places and treks should kick over. There we go. Once the places is done, I'll just jump back onto the map screen. So places is there. So the icons should appear on the map as they do and they should appear in our list as they do. So I can just pick pick a place that has a photo in it. Now I'm jump back to my local address and it's doing the treks uh, in Hillary's. If I pick on Hillary's, checking for photos and updating the database, there's two photos. So if we jump back down into data manager, what we should now see is two photos, zero meg. They're obviously quite small. Uh, they're gonna be in the K kilobytes, so it doesn't report. Uh, I could try and load some more up, but trust me, that would uh, increase as we use the app more. So there's a quick look at the data manager. I hope that helps you understand each of the data elements and what they do and how to clear them and keep going uh, if you have any problems with it. Thanks for using Explorers Traveller and we look forward to seeing you at our next tutorial.